Hi everyone, so with the S&P 500 finally crossing over that 3,000 barrier and the euro dollar breaking 110, I think it's fair to say a lot of investors will be celebrating. But with growing unemployment, US-China trade tensions and the risk of a second wave in the pandemic, something I'm pondering aloud this week is, are investors just acting like a bunch of lemmings and following each other up and over a cliff? Now there is a busy week ahead in markets to preview here. For me, the top three things to watch will be one, non-farm payrolls, two, the central bank meetings, and three, Brexit talks on the menu. But before I get into those in more detail, let's run down the highlights on the economic calendar this week. Okay, so remember there's Whit Monday, so some European markets will be closed, but there are still PMIs from the likes of China, Germany, and the United States that are released on Monday. We've got three central bank meetings in order of appearance. We've got the Reserve Bank of Australia, the Bank of Canada, and finally that European Central Bank meeting, which I'll we'll talk more about in just a minute. Okay, so remember there's Whip Monday, so some European markets will be closed, but there are still PMIs from the likes of China, Germany, and the United States that are released on Monday. We've got three central bank meetings in order of appearance. We've got the Reserve Bank of Australia, the Bank of Canada, and the European Central Bank. Then we round off the first Friday of the new month with non-farm payrolls. Now, before I discuss investors acting like lemons, can I ask that if you are getting some value from the video, please give that like button a quick ding and YouTube's algorithm will make sure that more people see the video and we can keep producing this free content. In case you're wondering what a lemming looks like, here it is. Pretty sweet, but jumping off cliffs, not so smart, I suppose. So again, the S&P 500 rose above the 3000 level and its 200 day moving average for that matter. And that took it to within 10% from its all time highs. And there are some good reasons to be optimistic about US stock markets. And by the same logic, reasons to think you don't need to hold haven currencies like the US dollar. The main thing is that the gradual reopening of economies is on track and many governments are now finally looking to undo travel restrictions in time for the summer holidays. The other thing is that governments and central banks have pumped in massive economic stimulus. That's where this week's central bank meetings come in, and the ECB really is the big one, and it looks like Christine Lagarde and her colleagues will announce an increase in the size of the PEPP, that's the acronym for their latest version of quantitative easing. And that monetary stimulus comes on top of the European Commission's plan for a 750 billion bailout fund for European countries like Spain and Italy that were hit hardest by the pandemic. So you can see there's a lot of stimulus coming and the stimulus is good. Now what's not good right now is that last month 20.5 million Americans lost their jobs. This month it should be under half that, which is both horrific and an improvement all in one. Now I said in my weekly video before last month's payroll report that it's pretty hard to square up a massive gain in the stock market with all these jobs being lost. But the thing is that trading and investing, it's all about taking action when there are a lot of unknowns. So we don't know how many Americans will get their jobs back once the US fully lifts the lockdown. And it's the same for every other country out there. So something I've picked up along the years though is that predicting America's demise has always been a bad bet. And I think the bet in markets right now is don't bet against the USA. Now there isn't too much to say that hasn't already been said about the EU-UK trade talks. But thinking about the effects on the pound, what I think is clear is that every time the pound makes some headway, Generally, when the mood is good in global markets, feeling good about the global recovery, Brexit drags it back down again. So clearly what we need from this week's talks is some kind of newfound ability to compromise from both sides, but all the language in the lead up suggests that a stalemate again is likely. And this just means we're in the countdown to June 30, that deadline when the UK can still ask for an extension to the transition period. But Boris Johnson's government have repeatedly said they won't do that. So to that, to me, suggests that the tendency for the pound to slump every so often when we get some bad Brexit news probably continues for the time being, at least for the next month. Now, finally, let me complete this video with a chart reel for my daily email newsletter, which, by the way, you can sign up for free on lcg.com, and it's also linked in the description below. 
First, we've got copper, which is an industrial metal heavily in demand for things like construction, and China is its world's biggest consumer. So when China doing well, you expect copper to do well. Uh, while copper is in or above this rising channel, it tells me that these US-China tension, uh, trade tensions are, are not really worrying markets. Second, again relating to China, is the Chinese Yuan. It has broken this level uh, since I put this chart out on Tuesday, and that potentially ushers in a new period of a much uh, weaker Yuan, stronger dollar Yuan, obviously. Third is comparing the S&P 500 with the FTSE MIB. As I mentioned in this video, the S&P 500 has been breaking out, but at the time I wrote this report on Thursday and made this chart, the breakout hadn't been confirmed by weaker global indices like the FTSE MIB. And last but not least is a simple breakout on the Euro dollar chart above that 110 level and the 200 DMA, both of which normally symbolize a new bullish trend emerging. Okay, good luck with trading this week and make sure to follow LCG on Instagram and to subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss our next video.